This night that we gather is a special one, one in which Christians would have hold vigil, praying and fasting for the day which happens tomorrow, for the Feast of All Saints. Unfortunately, the secular Halloween has almost altogether taken over this night, something that, that we in the Maxfield household don't get truly fired up for, not that we forfeit the whole thing. We have greeted kids at our door with a nice treat, and I've indulged in the leftovers gladly. We don't decorate our house necessarily, and we don't really get into costumes much, and we don't attend those after-hours Halloween parties that are all the rage. Not because we dislike or boycott this whole thing, and we're not old fuddy-duddies. It's just that it's just not really our thing. Maybe, maybe we'd get more into it if we were to dress up our dog Gracie in some lovely Supergirl outfits or something like that, but uh, she doesn't like wearing clothes, and chocolate is not good for dogs. But one thing I continue to enjoy about this time of year is watching that classic Halloween special, It's a Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. I've always gotten a kick out of the way those fabulous Peanuts characters talk about going out for tricks and treats and where Charlie Brown goes out and he only gets rocks. Possibly part of the reason is that he, in trying to create his costume, cut more than two holes in the white sheet that was supposed to be his ghost costume. And so he has to go around the whole night in a white, holy bed sheet. And really the costumes is the one thing that I love about this fabulous cartoon, which are simple. They're not those go to the store and buy them plastic, commercially made TV costumes that we see today. I even wore a costume this night under my vestments. You know what I'm dressed as? A priest. <laughs> now, not, not really, in this context, you, it's not really a costume, but, but if I stopped for some food on the way home, I would imagine some people might think that I'm in some kind of a priest getup, right? It's happened to me before. They say, you're not really a priest. You're too young to be a priest. I say, no, I really am a priest. Well, this going around from house to house came out of the Middle Ages in England and Ireland, believe, believing that on October 31st, souls were liberated from purgatory for 48 hours. And so families would gather in their house to await any soul who might want to visit them. And beggars began to get in on this tradition by going around and knocking on the doors and begging for some food, which became known as soul cake. In return, the beggars would offer to remember in their prayers someone who had passed on from that family. Further, in the late 1800s in Scotland, townsfolk were known for doing what they called guising. And they, were, they would dress up in some sort of dis 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 disguise and carry around lanterns made out of scooped up turnips, and these geysers would also be rewarded with cakes, with fruit, sometimes with money. And it's thought that as they were going out, if they dressed up themselves, then they would just fit in with all the ghouls and ghosts that are out there anyways. Well, the first reported practice of geysing in North America was in 1911. Now, today, the practice of dressing up for Halloween to blend in with the ghouls out there that are thought to be cruising around is pretty much gone. Instead, for many, dressing up is a kind of a sign of what they might want to be when they grow up, right? We think about those who are coming around the houses tonight in superhero costumes or princesses or firefighters. Now, I suppose some who choose to dress up a little more gruesome as doing so to kind of symbolize that other side of things, of death. Although death will come to every one of us. I'm not sure any of us will become zombies. Death, yes. Flesh eating, walking dead, I don't think so. And although, when Jesus raised Lazarus in our gospel lesson tonight, something happened that may have freaked some people out, right? As he called out Lazarus, something came out that looked most like a mummy. Scripture says his hands and feet were bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Startling? Yes. Gruesome? Well, only if the stench of being dead for days had permeated those, those wrappings, right? Would have been pretty horrifying. Well, 
whether you are all about Halloween or you just assume skip the whole thing, this is still a special night in the mind, in my mind, above all being what I always call it, All Hallows' Eve. A great reminder also with the raising of Lazarus of the true reality of the situation, that Jesus triumphed over death. In the beginning of chapter 11, when Jesus gets the news that their friend Lazarus is sick, Jesus proclaims, this sickness will not end in death. Going on to say, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. And later, when Jesus tells his disciples and Lazarus that the, the, the Lazarus had died, they no doubt are like, what's up, Jesus? You said he was going to be all right, and now you're telling us that he died? And Jesus says, for your sake, I'm glad I was not there, so that you may believe. The raising of Lazarus was a sign, a sign of a new age, a new beginning, a sign that God was in control, even beyond the grave, a sign of God's presence among them, a sign that the kingdom of God had come in a new and mighty way, and that Jesus was the key. Now, again, frankly, I don't mind Halloween. We're not into all the gruesome stuff, witches and walking dead, but amongst all the hoopla of the secular holiday of Halloween, in my heart, I know the truth of life after death. As Scripture says, my Redeemer has conquered the grave. And he raised Lazarus back to life. He called out demons, and they shudder and obey. And he will cast the evil one into the lake of fire. So hallowed be his name. As we speak of this time of year in terms of All Hallows' Eve, it's a reminder of who is ultimately in control, the Holy One. And on All Hallows' Day, which tomorrow became All Saints' Day, we honor and celebrate those who have been made holy by the shedding of the blood of Jesus, in whom all who believe are sanctified, are being made holy as he is holy. For he who raised Lazarus from the dead did so as a sign of the resurrection and life that comes to all who would believe it. For Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Now of the saints, fellow priest of this church, William Porter de Bose, I think we say his name, um, he was also a noted theologian and a professor of, in the late 1800s of Swanee, the Episcopal Seminary of the South. And he said this, he said, Only saints know of sin, and he who thus knows sin knows the cross. And only he who knows the cross knows redemption and resurrection and eternal life. You know, I joke about wearing a costume of a priest, knowing that this is truly who I am by the grace of God, and some might say that God has a sense of humor. But really, and truly, brothers and sisters, all of us here, some not knowing so, some trying not to embrace the fact, some relishing in the fact, have all put on something else besides our clothes. As we walked through those doors into this holy space, as we had prayers this morning, we have put on Christ. Can you feel it? Can you feel the presence of the holy in this place? He is here. He is with us as we invoke the Holy Spirit to come and to be present with us. And he is here among us in this holy place as he is with us everywhere. And it's just our choice to intentionally put him on, living into him every day as we put on our clothes by choice. Beloved, this weekend, many have put on costumes, some with a desire to become what they want to be, Superman, a teenage mutant ninja turtle, maybe the undead. And we celebrate this weekend not who we want to be, but who we are as sons and daughters of the Most High, clothed in majesty by virtue of our belief in baptism, being marked as his own forever. We are his, he is ours. We are the saints of God. 
who, quote, has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. You are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault, says Scripture. No need of a mask. We are his. He is ours. Yet we are all still called each and every day to put on Christ as we do our clothes, that we may live out our days in all virtuous and godly living, with love in our hearts and joy in our steps and blessings upon our lips. Now, as All Hallows' Eve continues to come every year, and we see all those little ghouls and goblins and Harry Potters and superheroes roaming around the streets, remember who you truly are and who it is that we are trying to be most like, being holy as he is holy. And throughout the year, as we put on Christ each and every day, living into who we are, pray also that we would have boldness, have wisdom in our day, the courage to live, to live like him that we aim to live like, Jesus the Christ. And then go on to do extraordinary things, things of the saints, things that people have gone on to do before us, like Blessed Polycarp, father of the church, second century bishop of Smyrna, who was naked and tied to a stake, who prayed to God saying these words. He said, O Lord, our God, O Almighty Father of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we have received the knowledge of you, God of angels and hosts of all creation, and of the whole race of saints who live under your eyes, I bless thee because thou hast seen fit to bestow upon me this day and this hour, that I may share among the number of martyrs the cup of thy anointed and rise to eternal life both in soul and in body in virtue of the immortality of the Holy Spirit. May I be accepted among them in thy sight today as a rich and pleasing sacrifice, such as thou, the true God that cannot utter a falsehood, hast prearranged revealed in advance and now consummated. And therefore I praise thee through the eternal and heavenly high priest Jesus Christ, thy beloved Son, through whom be glory to thee, together with him and the Holy Spirit, both now and for the ages yet to come. Now at the end of that prayer, it wasn't the end for Polycarp. We were told in the teaching of the apostles, also called the Didache, that at this amen of Polycarp's, when the men attending the fire lit it, a mighty flame shot up, yet the martyr's body was surrounded with a wall, like a, like a ship's sail bellying in the breeze. He was in the middle of it, not as a burning flesh, but as bread baking, or as gold and silver refined in the furnace. In fact, it is said that there was even a scent of incense, or some other precious spice among them, as the fire did not consume a polycarp. Instead, he was there. And they could see that his body was not going to be burned. And therefore, the executioner ran in and stuck him with a dagger. And at that time, a dove appeared. And a great quantity of, quantity of blood, says our material, which quenched the fire. Now the believers gathered together in that place. They had difficulty in securing this body of their blood, beloved friend. For some thought that those who witnessed this act of God might turn from one who, would be, who was crucified and worship this man instead. But the Christians said this. They said, They did not realize that we shall never bring ourselves either to abandon Christ, who suffered for the salvation of all those who are saved in the whole world, or to worship any other. Him we worship as being the Son of God. The martyrs we love as being disciples and imitators of the Lord. And so, deservingly so, because their unsurpassable devotion to their king and teacher, may it be our good fortune also to be their companions and fellow disciples. Beloved, our challenge 
our call, our privilege in this life as believers is to become more and more who we are as Christians, as saints of God, and ready to do all that our Lord calls us to do and to be. Costumes are fun, but they come and go year after year, and they are not who we really are. But we, we are called to dress each and every day, not in a costume, but in the wondrous garment of Christ himself, that we may be a people who hold not to the things of the world, but to cling to the one who created the world and he who conquered death and the grave and be holy as he is holy, that we may see the glory of God and ever be refined in the fire of his love, in his grace, in his truth, till we're all called to be home with those who are already there in that holy place. Blessed Polycarp, the blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Peter and Paul, and all the heavenly saints of God who, sent it, who sing an endless praise, the song that we sing week after week. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth is full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. For on this all hallows eve, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen.